Hello and welcome to our next video of our series uh, with TIA Portal Basics or Intro or Project or whatever you want to call it, the TIA Totally Integrated Automation Portal. Last time we've made the hardware configuration, we've got PLC set up, so that should work fine. And now I actually want to talk about the little project we're going to do. It's going to be more and more, but for now we will concentrate on this beauty I just built. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, it's not the most beautiful thing. It's very simple. Let me explain. <clears throat> so we've got this conveyor belt here, K1, and we've got work pieces, the green one here. The green one is our work piece. And I want to put the green one on the conveyor belt from wherever, maybe manually put there or process before. Um, and as soon as it's put on the conveyor belt, V1, whatever that is, detects that the component is here. As soon as V1 detects this component, Conveyor belt should turn on, right? Here, we've got a stopper. One and one here is a stopping mechanism. So depending on the process, for now we're not really going to use it. Uh, the component should stop here. <clears throat> for now, to keep it simple, uh, as soon as B2, a sensor in the range of one and one here, detects a component, so right now, basically already here, because it's on the line, uh, one and one should open. And as long as B2 sees a component, 1M1 should stay open. And now we don't see the component anymore. 1M1 will close again, not leaving any more components through. And we can go on. As soon as B3 sees a component, uh, the sensor, uh, the conveyor belt will stop. Right? We'll see B3 is a little bit different than B1. We'll see about that. So that's the simple process. Right, we've got the component, put it here in the beginning, B1 detects it. Oh, I forgot the start button. As soon as B1 detects it, nothing happens yet, we have to press the start button. Right, we press the start button, then conveyor starts, B2 detects a part, stopper opens, part goes on, it goes on all the time. Um, other one closes again here, the stopper, and we're here in the end. Sorry for not, and uh, now the conveyor stops, sorry for not making a fantastic animation or so, but I think this is simple enough to understand. As soon as this is done, someone is going to take the part off and we can put a new one and hit S1 again, conveyor turns on and so on, right? This is our process. First thing we need to consider here is, um, and that's what this video is about. First thing we need to consider is which inputs do I have, which outputs do I have available for my PLC? So what can my PLC see? What can my logic see? So Let's have a look. I've got B1, the detection for the component in the beginning. That's something my PLC has to see. Second thing, the start button. I press the start button, my PLC has to recognize that. B2, my PLC has to realize that there's a component in this position. And in the end, also B3, my PLC has to recognize that there's a component at B3 position. So those will be my sensors, right? Those are my inputs to my system. That's the first, right? I've got B1, B2, B3, sensor inputs, and S1, a push button input. And which outputs do I have? What is my PLC going to activate or deactivate? Of course, I've got the movement of the green part here, which happens through K1. And I've got the movement of the stopper, which happens through 1M1. So I've got two outputs, four inputs, two outputs, not too many. I've got a list for that, uh, pretty simple here. Uh, I've got K1, not looking at the address yet, doesn't matter. K1 will turn on the conveyor belt. 1M1 will open the stopper. Those are outputs, right? Those are the outputs of our system. And I've got B1, B2, B3, which are all responsible for the conveyor, for the conveyor detection of parts. And I've got S1, which is responsible for the start button, right? Which is the start button that we detected. Here's one difference that we can see between B1 and B3. B3 is active sends out the logic one, a logic high, whenever there is no component. So right now, nothing is on the conveyor belt. My PLC will see off. B1 is off, B2 is off, but B3 is on. It's a normally closed uh, contact there. We'll need to take care of that in the programming then later on. And S1 is also normally open, which means right now it's not activated. If I press it, it's active. So far for that. So this is the first thing that I need to teach my PLC, that I've got those. 
And this is why we have addresses. Every one of those, K1, 1M1, B1, B2, B3, S1, they are connected to the PLC physically with cables, right? With a, one cable each. And that's why we have those addresses. If I go to my PLC, right? To my PLC in my tier portal here. I've got here, for example, the starting address. Those are my inputs, right? I've got I10.0. I've got the next one would be I10.1, I10.2, and so on. So this plan, someone made this plan. And I need to see, ah, B1 is connected to I10.0. That makes sense. It can only be connected to one connection here. So 10.0 was here. So this is where my... Oh, better keep that here. This is the place where I need my B1 connected to. This is where it is physically connected to. I mean, I can't do that in the software physically connecting something, but we have something called the IO table or so-called PLC tags. So if I open my PLC tags here, I have different tables. Let's go to all tags and you will see it's empty for now. Uh, and I've got my default tag table. Whenever I add a PLC variable, so those are going to be variables. Whenever I add one, uh, they are going to be added to the default table. All text is everything I have in my project. The default table. The default table, if you see this here in the end, the 55, this is how many things we already have in here. There are some system constants. Right? Numbers 55, 55 system constants that are there from the beginning. So it already shows 55. We're not considering those right now. <clears throat> What I want to do is I want to add a new table. We could theoretically just put it in default tag or in show all tags, but I want to have it clean a little bit, my program. I want to have this a little bit clean. Uh, so I will need, uh, I will add a new tag table and I will, I will rename it and I will call this sensors and actuators or inputs, outputs whatsoever. And now I can start actually putting this list that was given by the electrician or by whomever into my uh, project here. So let's start with B1. B1 input 10.0 and comment co uh, component at the converse. That the comment is very helpful. I would always add one. So the first one will be B1. Data type bool because it's all either 0 or 1. That's bool, on or off, 0 or 1, true or false, whatever you want to call it. The address. I 10.0, that's what we had. <clears throat> you maybe see that it adds a little uh, percentage sign there, which you don't need to consider now. This is just the indicator that it's a global variable that you can use all over the project. For now, it doesn't matter. It's going to add that automatically. And the comment is component at conveyor start. Got that. And now a very, very useful thing. I've got this one added to my project, the B1. And if I go back to my hardware configuration, you can do that down here because it's still open. Or you can do that here by double clicking on device configuration. If you look here, this is where I connected B1 now. And you see TR portal automatically adds the B1 here, right? That's great. That's great. This, so it automatically makes, makes that connection. If I made it wrong and now I know, oh no, it's connected here physically because someone changed it this one is broken for whatever reason uh and it was changed to here i12.0 i can just go there oops oh i put it in this table whoopsie i can just uh work per cut and i want it actually in here sorry for that cut paste that's possible just wanted to show that um i can simply say no this should go to i12.0 and you can see it changed here it was there now it's here so this is rewiring possible but for now, I assume everything here is as this is. Um, so B1 is 10.0 and so on and so on and so on. <clears throat> Nothing is connected to the first module here because those are analog inputs. We're going to talk about those later on maybe. So now that I, we know a little bit about this, I need to put this list into the TR project. Um, there are some ways of doing that. Either you type it down, which is probably the best way, um, or I have got an Excel list, an Excel file here pre-configured, right, pre-done, and I can read that. I can import this into my TR project, right, if it's in the right format. 
I can just simply import that. I will do this now. Can do that and show all, wherever, uh, whichever tag table I have opened, doesn't matter. I can import. I can import from an Excel file. Uh, I just need to select that. Here we go. Import, hit OK. Import completed successfully. And you see, now I've got all my sensors and actuators added. <coughs> and also they are added. I hope they are added here. Yeah, perfect in the table. I've got B1, B2, B3, S1, K1 and 1M1 perfectly added here in my hardware configuration. I could have done that manually here. I don't, don't get me wrong. This could have done. Uh, could, this could have happened automatically or manually. <coughs> Now I've got the connection here into my tags, right? And you see, I named my table in my Excel file inputs and actuator, uh, outputs, not sensors and actuators. I could also rename this one for whatever I want to do with that. <clears throat> in the tag table, we can also restrict some accesses if I don't want them to be able, or an, an HMI or a server to be able to read those, uh, I can restrict those accesses. Right. I don't know why this was turned off because it's visible on HMI. Uh, I want to see that, of course, uh, in my upcoming videos as well. <clears throat> so all that's left to do is actually taking this part. So we have this, right? The PLC knows where they are. What we need to do is putting the logic in there. So the program, if the green component here is in front of B1, I press S1 and it goes on and so on and so on. But this will be part in, of the next video. This was just concentrating on the input output list here, which is not too complicated, uh, I hope. And the configuration here, the device configuration. There we go. <laughs> in the next video, we will program the, the behavior here of this. Whoop. So please join me in the next video. I would be happy about it. Leave a like, uh, leave a follow, and I'll see you the next time around. Thank you for watching. Bye.